Hey everyone, the holidays are over and it's 2015! We've been on holiday for the last few weeks, but we can't start without talking about the biggest story of last month. The release of the new Seth Rogen movie, The Interview, turned into one of the biggest nightmares of the year. The movie, about two TV personalities who are tasked by the CIA to travel to North Korea to assassinate Kim Jong-un, expected a quiet Christmas release. What could possibly go wrong? First, Sony Pictures was hacked, which was an entire story in its own right, but of course people blame North Korea, which led to America and North Korea just sharing a bunch of back and forth vague threats. Just another Tuesday, whatever. Then the hack Hackers posted a warning to New York City moviegoers that they would bomb premiere screenings of the movie. I mean, holy crap guys, you're threatening to kill people over the equivalent of the Three Stooges, you nasty spy! But on Christmas Eve, America and Sony proved to terrorists that they shall not be moved and they released the interview online and in theaters at the same time. Yeah, the movie sucked. And we're all still alive to talk about how much it sucked. But what does this all mean? It either means that America doesn't know how to handle North Korea, which at this point is the poster boy of empty threats, or it means that Sony's marketing team is genius. Probably not that one though, because the movie's like $30 million in the hole. I think at this point, everyone just wants to forget that this movie even exists. Kind of like North Korea. All right, now with that out of the way, what's been going on this week? Sia released a new music video for Elastic Heart, which got its share of backlash. The video is an elaborate performance by Maddie Ziegler, you know, the girl from the Chandelier video, dancing in a cage with Shia LaBeouf. The video features very raw emotional performances, but a lot of people got Stranger Danger vibes from it, which Sia responded to with, quote, All I can say is Maddie and Shia are the only two actors I felt could play these two warring Sia self-states. I apologize to those who feel triggered by Elastic Heart. Incidentally, what is going on with Shia LaBeouf? I mean, he went from Transformers movies to Elastic Heart to this. Actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. Mr. LaBeouf, you may be crazy. I don't know what you're doing, but for the love of God, please keep doing it. With the start of January, we just dove headfirst into award season and they were kicked off last Sunday with the Golden Globes. Also known as... Wait, which ones are those again? It's movies and TV. I got you covered. I could talk about who won and stuff, but it's the Golden Globes. Everyone has a Golden Globe. I have a Golden Globe. So instead, I'm gonna give out my own awards for the night. The most awkward running gag award goes to Margaret Cho and hosts Tina Fey and Blonde Tina Fey. They win for this train wreck of a North Korea joke that made the interview look like the great dictator. You know hey, people holding up many cards to make one big picture. The most looks like a used Q-tip award goes to Matthew McConaughey. The most looks like a Wendy's employee award goes to Wes Anderson. The award for most enthusiastic goes to Harrison Ford. And the Golden Globe goes to... And the most looks like a Prince impersonator award goes to Prince. One award I will mention is that George Clooney took home the Cecil B. DeMille Award for Lifetime Achievement. And I only bring that up because I want to remind everyone that this is a thing. You really look like your dad. I do. Yeah, without white yeah, or gray I'll, hair. I'll grow out of it, I think. Huh? Nothing, but... nothing I say can make that funnier. If you want to see the rest of the nominees and winners, you can see them at goldenglobes.com slash goldenglobewinners. So now that the Golden Globes are over, we can look forward to the rest of awards season for more celebratory back padding. I mean, we're all just waiting for the Oscars anyway, right? Nobody? Just me? Okay. To close out, here's what's going on this week at Algonquin. Monsters of Schlock will be performing next Tuesday the 20th at the Observatory. Admission is free, doors open at 7.30, and they will attempt the Guinness World Record for most animal traps released on a body in one minute. Gross! but in like an awesome American Horror Story freak show kind of gross. Or if you're in the mood for a concert, folk group JJ and the Pillars will be performing one week from today at the Ob. Once again, admission is free and doors open at 8.30. So run, run, run. And unfortunately, the previously announced Nikki Yanovsky concert at the Commons Theatre has been cancelled due to scheduling conflicts. Refunds for tickets bought at the box office will be available until Friday, January 23rd. Make sure you bring your ticket to qualify. For more information, visit the Student Association's website at algonquinsa.com. Okay, now that we're knee-deep into awards season, I've got a lot of catching up to do, but right now Chantel's gonna help us get through this dry winter with some natural skincare tips.